she's one of the subscribers. What is different about this quilt is it has uh, folds or flaps. And I've never done a quilt like this. I've made or pieced a quilt like this, but I've never myself quilted one. So this was a quilt to learn from. So I hope you come along with me and you know, <laughs> the quilt is gorgeous. She's beautiful. A little bit more of a complicated quilt because she has the seams. I don't know if I wanna base those down or just finger watch. When I was quilting this quilt, I didn't know how to go about quilting it. Um, I didn't know if I should base down the flaps or if I should just micromanage the quilt and be on top of it. So on the first initial row, I went ahead and tried to baste the quilt. I ended up basting it and it took me a good 30 minutes to baste all the areas where it had flaps. All right, I don't know if you can see it. I basted everything completely down so that if the machine runs in front of me and I can't have time to uh, tack them, I just did a really easy baste on every section that has the flippies. And honestly, I don't know if I'm doing this right because I've never done a quilt like this, but hey, I need to do these too. I'd rather do that than have like pleats. On the first row, it only had maybe about 20 flaps to base down, but it took me some time <laughs> to base all those areas down. Now, the first row went wonderfully. There was one area where the needle caught it, where it wasn't basted, and it did a weird, ugly pleat, and I had to unstitch that and go back and resew it, but it was one area, so that, that it was smooth. Row two, I thought, you know what? I'm quick enough, I'm sharp enough, I could just manage it. I don't have to baste it, because in row two, the pleats or the folds that I needed to base down increased tremendously <laughs> in the area of the quilting space. So I said, you know, I can, I can manage it. I, I don't have to base. Let's live on the wild side. Let's live on, <laughs> for real. I regretted that decision. But basting is, it made it easier but the problem with basting is um, it took time and then I had to spray the quilt and get rid of all the little puncture holes. That as I'm here, I could like just hold my finger in the designated area where it's maneuvering and I could control it so I don't have to baste it and then I don't have to steam iron it. So this is where I don't have to be watching it's when it comes back up on the seam. It's here, but I'm gonna have to watch it here. So I'm getting my finger pretty close to the... Pretty close to the seam by the foot so that I can push it down. But it'll save me the basting time and it will save me the removing the base and it will save me um, having to iron the puncture holes off from the basting. So do I consider this a hard quilt? No, it's a beautifully made quilt. I think hard quilts are the quilts that uh, have like a lot of working issues. I wanted to share what happened. One area went and it folded the fabric the wrong way. My mistake was not stopping the machine and unstitching that area right away and restarting. Because micromanaging kind of worked, but the moment the fabric caught a seam, if I was not a uh, type A personality, I probably would have been fine. But that folded up seam was to the death of me. Instead of managing where the long arm was long arming and being on top of it like I should have been, my brain could not leave that alone and manage it later. I started unpicking it like I do, 
because I can't leave it alone. And the machine ended up folding over like four other areas. So managing is good if you are on top of it and you can keep your eyes on managing it. But if you get distracted one little tiny bit, it can ruin you. So let me just say what happened. I had to completely stop it because now I had probably like four open fold ups and I don't know if I shared it on the film. Hopefully I have a film, but at the time it was like the worst moment. And sometimes when I'm going through tough times when I'm working, I don't film because uh, <clears throat> I need to manage that not and I'm already trying to manage my emotions and to manage a camera on top of that. This is like overwhelming. So what I ended up doing is I unstitched all of it. I just decided, you know what? Unstitch all the extra pleats or areas where it pleated the wrong way, go back and fix it. <clears throat> but then this pattern was weird. The pattern went in one direction one way and then switched directions. So to restart the design, I got really confused. And by then, I think my back was hurting. My, um, I was just really fatigued. I wasn't in the best emotional space <laughs> ever. That, uh, uh, yeah, it was not, um, it was a, not a good long arm working day. It was just, there's some days where I purposely will not work because I know that they're sometimes just hard days. But this day, knowing that it was a bit of a hard day, I still wanted to finish this quilt, which made the day way harder. I literally uh, just turned the machine off, saved the design, and decided that tomorrow's the next day. And tomorrow was a hell of a lot better. So we're into tomorrow, which is row three. On row three, I decided to baste everything. Everything. <laughs> everything. I didn't care how long it take, took. I didn't care. Um, I did not want to go where yesterday went. Baste, baste. And I'm trying to baste right at the edge so it tacks it completely flat down. And sometimes, I'm just gonna share this. I know it looks really pretty on camera. It just, oh, long arm quilting, I want one. It is so neat. It is work and uh, you have bad days. Everyone has bad days at work. And if you learn from those bad days on how to manage not having those kind of days, you could end up with better days. So better day number two, I basted everything and then row three went So I'm gonna take off the basting. And then um, there's, I have basting here. I hope you can see it. And then I'm gonna take the basting underneath or the, so when you base, you kind of have to do a lot of cleanup a bit, but honestly, <laughs> it is worth it. I took the base out and it left like these little tiny holes, but then I wet the fabric and I steamed it and the holes disappeared. So it looked beautiful. And I, just, I sprayed with water or starch, it doesn't matter. I think starch works the best, but all the areas where I basted, so you don't see like little puncture holes. And then I have my iron, which is gonna close those holes. <laughs> 